intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So first you tell me what is the most common site of cholangiocarcinoma? It's the hilum. So that is actually the biliary confluence and it is also known as clad skin tumor. So see what is the most common site. This is the liver and you can see this is the bile duct. This is the bile duct. This is the gallbladder bile duct. This is the intrahepatic part of bile duct. Okay, so in 40 to 60 percent cases, where is the malignancy? Malignancy is arising at the hilum or biliary confluence. So this is hilum or biliary confluence. And what is the name of this tumor? This is known as clad skin tumor. What's the name? This is clad skin tumor. Clear? So most common site of cholangiocarcinoma, it is biliary confluence. This is biliary confluence. And the tumor arising from biliary confluence this is known as clad skin tumor and in how many cases in 40 to 60 percent of cases the most common site it is hilum or biliary confluence clear now see the second question so in how many cases it is arising from intrahepatic duct so whenever cholangiocarcinoma is arising from intrahepatic duct this is known as intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma so this is arising from intrahepatic duct this is intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma in how many percentage of cases in 10 percent so intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma it's responsible for 10 percent of cholangiocarcinoma clear now what are the risk factors generally intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma it is associated with conditions which causes biliary inflammation what the conditions which causes biliary inflammation and the conditions which causes fibrosis. Biliary inflammation, fibrosis means within intrahepatic duct means it should be occurring within the liver. So what are the risk factors? Hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus infection, cirrhosis, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, diabetes mellitus. So intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, it is associated with conditions which causes biliary inflammation, biliary inflammation or the conditions which causes fibrosis, biliary inflammation and fibrosis obviously in intrahepatic bile duct. So the risk factors are hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus infection, cirrhosis, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and diabetes mellitus. These are the risk factors. If you see the clinical features, clinical features are very similar to HCC. Here majority of patients are asymptomatic in early stages. And we discussed that in HCC, what is the most common symptom? Abdominal pain, where exactly right upper quadrant pain followed by weight loss. So in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma also, what is the most common symptom? Right upper quadrant pain followed by weight loss. So the clinical features of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, this is similar to HCC, means here also patients are asymptomatic. Patients are asymptomatic at early stages. And what is the most common symptom? the most common symptom it is right upper quadrant pain followed by weight loss this is right upper quadrant pain followed by weight loss weight loss okay another important point if you see the location of these tumors suppose this is the liver and this is the intrahepatic part of bile duct this is the bile duct this is the intrahepatic part of bile duct so if you see the location of these tumors, these tumors are actually peripheral. So when the tumors are peripheral, you tell me jaundice is common or jaundice is rare. So in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, because the tumors are peripheral, tumors are located in periphery. That's why jaundice is rare. So here jaundice is less common or rare. In such patients, jaundice, it is less common because there is peripheral location of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Another important point. What happens here? We discussed that at early stages, majority of patients are asymptomatic. So the more commonly, what is the presentation? That in these patients, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, it is incidentally detected on cross-sectional imaging or on radiological investigations. So more common presentation, what happens? It is incidentally detected. It is incidentally detected on radiological investigation, especially on cross-sectional imaging.
Now see the differences between hepatocellular carcinoma and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. In HCC, we discussed that alpha fetoprotein is raised, but in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, alpha fetoprotein is normal. What is the characteristic tumor marker of cholangiocarcinoma? The characteristic tumor marker, it is CA99 that is raised. Apart from CA99, CEA is also raised. So see the tumor markers here. What are the tumor markers which are raised? Tumor markers. So if we see the tumor markers first, alpha fetoprotein, it's normal. Alpha fetoprotein, it's normal. But what is raised? CEA, it is raised. And CA99, you know that CA99, it's specific marker, specific tumor marker for cholangiocarcinoma, for carcinoma gallbladder, for carcinoma pancreas. So this is raised, CEA and CA99. Now one simple question you tell me, what is the most common malignancy of liver? Metastasis. So what happens, metastatic adenocarcinoma to the liver, it is more common than intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So whenever we are going to find such tumor, in which the origin is not directly from the liver. So what? It's a diagnosis of exclusion. Intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Why? Because metastatic adenocarcinoma of liver is more common. So we have to perform the investigations to rule out metastasis to the liver. We perform CT also, we perform MRI also. Now see what are the findings on radiological investigations. We perform CT, we perform MRI. And what are the findings on these radiological investigations? There is focal hepatic mass and since the location is peripheral, associated with peripheral biliary dilatation. Apart from that, if you see on delayed phase, especially in, on CT, there is persistent enhancement. Persistent enhancement on delayed phases. And why there is persistent enhancement on delayed phases? Because of, it's because of fibrotic nature of IHC because of fibrotic nature of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. There is persistent enhancement on delayed phases. And what happens? There is another finding which is seen. There is hepatic capsular retraction. There are certain other important features like there is increased risk of intrahepatic metastasis. There is lymph node metastasis. And in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, there is growth along biliary tree. So what are the special features? In intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, there is intrahepatic, there is intrahepatic metastasis, there is lymph node metastasis, and very important, very important growth along biliary tree. So in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, you can find growth along biliary tree, biliary tree. So all these features, all these features are frequently seen in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. All these features are frequently seen in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Now what is the treatment of choice? It's the complete resection. Complete resection is the treatment of choice. And if you're talking about resectability rate, the resectability rate of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma that is up to 60%. So treatment of choice is the complete resection, complete resection in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. If you see the resectability rate, that is up to 60%. Resectability rate, it is up to 60%. If you are talking about long term survival in which patients in unresected tumors. The treatment of choice is complete resection. So if there is unresected tumor, long-term survival, it's rare. The long-term survival in unresected tumor, it's rare. Another important point, if completely resected tumor is there, the complete resection is done, how much is the three-year survival rate? It is 16 to 61%. So in completely resected tumors, three-year survival, the three-year survival, it is 16 to 61%. And how much is the five-year survival? It is 24 to 44%. Five years, five years survival. This is 24 to 44%.
so three year survival 16 to 61 and five year survival that is 24 to 44 percent in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma so what are the factors which are associated with poor outcome in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma imagine a patient is having multifocal tumor so multifocality patient is having lymph node metastasis there is vascular invasion and whenever you are going to resect the tumor still there is positive margins so all of these are associated with poor outcome in patients of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma